outlook when it comes to the issue of education and reforms here in the country. And uh, what a better time to have this particular discussion and with you on this uh, particular setup. Now, when you're talking about the issue of children's rights, there are a lot of questions and uh, a way of narrowing down on things when it comes to human rights and, and children's rights. When you're looking into the children's rights, um, who has the sole responsibility in terms of ensuring that children are accorded their rights as envisaged in the Constitution and in the Children Act of 2022? Uh, Irene, um, the children's rights are part of human rights. Mm -hmm. And human rights are uh, God-given. They are inalienable. They cannot be taken away from you. Mm -hmm. um, um, for the child, uh, the child has particular rights on, in addition to the human rights. Okay. Just because they are minors, because they are defined categorically mm -hmm. as uh, you know, persons under 18 years old. And uh, um, by definition, mm -hmm. is that um, the state is in charge of all children, regardless of race, mm -hmm. status, and um, you know their backgrounds, um, and it's mainly because um, the parents are also um, uh, citizens of the country. They are the taxpayers, and uh, they have given the obligation. I mean, uh, through um, um, you know responsibility uh, to the state, mm -hmm. and by state here, I simply mean because the people who decide through the ballot. Mm -hmm who goes to government yeah. positions, mm -hmm. whether at the national level and at the county level, mm -hmm. uh, is the voter. And who is the voter? Is the parent. Yeah. So the custody of um, mentorship and the provisions in terms of safeguarding uh, the upbringing of this child, mm -hmm. number one, is with the parent. Mm -hmm. And the a child is known to have two parents, uh, whether they live together or they don't live together. Mm -hmm. And uh, where they of these children are uh, being also are uh, related to the child. And so the relatives and the And wherever, yes. Child. And where there is failure of the two, mm -hmm. the state takes the responsibility mm -hmm. of taking care of that child. And you can see now uh, the chances of this child being left, because this is a minor. This yeah. is someone who cannot make personal decisions because of vulnerabilities and the disadvantage of age and um, you know not being accessible to any kind of uh, uh, let's say utilities mm -hmm. so um, um so those are three categories of uh, you know child safeguard mm -hmm. in terms of uh, providing uh, the basics and this could be uh, food mm -hmm. it could be water it mm -hmm. could be clothing it mm -hmm. could be shelter it could be access to health care mm -hmm. it could be access to education mm -hmm. or even um, um um being um you know shown the way mm -hmm. to grow as an upright human being okay. in um, i mean um, um, uh, based on the values of a given society all right whether it is language, mm -hmm. there are norms of a particular society, mm -hmm. or even um, uh, it doesn't matter whether it is a rural area or uh, a, a, you know an urban area or even an informal settlement, mm -hmm. as long as the environment which this child um, was was born or uh, brought up mm -hmm. have those tenets mm -hmm. of uh, decency mm -hmm. in terms of this child growing up as an upright human being. All right. Now, when it comes to the issue of obligation of um, the state. Um, as taxpayers, we churn um, millions in terms of taxes that we pay in every financial year um, to the tax uh, taxman, which is KRA. And therefore, begs the question, the child is not paying the, the, the taxes, but as the parent, I'm paying the taxes. What then are the principles of obligation in terms of children rights by the state, children rights by the state? Because it is not uh, black and white area when it comes to what the state is obligated due to the status quo uh, of the way that we see things um, here in the country. Okay, thank you so much, Irene. And uh, let me begin by saying that Kenya as a country is, uh, uh, um, you know, among many, um, you know, nations uh, that are there in the world. Okay. Um, uh, continentally found in Africa, 
And uh, uh, Kenya is a signatory to the United Nations mm -hmm. Convention on the uh, Rights of the Child. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, being a signatory to that, it means as ratified mm -hmm. of the same. And the, our constitution of uh, the year 2010 um, um, automatically made um, you know, uh, the government to be obligated in terms of implementation of any treaty, any international treaty mm -hmm. that uh, they signed. Because I want to begin you know, at, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the bigger level yeah. before we Let's come to our down. country. Mm -hmm. And part of the implementation of that, you know, the state is mandated, mandated mm -hmm. uh, to put together you know, laws. Mm -hmm. And for this case, um, Kenya has um, you know, the Children's Act of 2022. Yes. Um, it was first enacted in 2002. Yeah. And there were some amendments that mm -hmm. were put in place last year. Yeah. Uh, Kenya um, has also the mother law, which is the constitution. Yes. And uh, you can see these safeguards are found in the Bill of Rights. It's found in Article 1 of the Constitution, where sovereign power belongs to okay. the people. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, there are institutions that have been put in place mm -hmm. by the government in order um, to safeguard the interests of the child, mm -hmm. whether it is on social services, economic power, to ensure that these children are, are brought up in a way that the parents do not uh, struggle. Yeah. But again, let me joke your mind, mm -hmm. uh, Kenyans do not pay taxes annually. They pay every minute. Yeah. Uh, the so moment you are in the kiosk <laughs> paying or buying yeah. sugar or yeah. buying, uh, you know, Sweet or whatever, tax, the yeah. VAT and all that. Those mm -hmm. who are moving, you know, buying fuel, there's, you know, the fuel levy, you know, tax and mm -hmm. all that. Cause those ones who are taking their goods to the market. Yeah. And so, so that this basket where government gets revenue, uh, KRA is just an institution yeah. that has been given the mandate to just, you know, act on behalf of government. Mm -hmm. But now mm -hmm. uh, there is the planning system. Um, that is why the decision makers in terms of legislation, uh, representation, and oversight mm -hmm. is the bi bicameral parliament that we have in our country, which is the Senate and the National Assembly. Yes. And then um, we have uh, the interpreter of the laws and the arbiter, which mm -hmm. is the judiciary. Yeah. But now the implementation arm, mm -hmm. or the implementing arm of government is the, le uh, is the executive mm -hmm. arm. Mm -hmm. But now, uh, this constitution that we have, that we gave ourselves in 2010, we had also a lower level of government, mm -hmm. and there are 47 units. Yeah. These are the county governments. And children's services is also part of the devolved functions of government because citizens at that lower level, because they are given funding, mm -hmm. uh, they are given money mm -hmm. or funding mm -hmm. uh, through a shared revenue allocation. I mean, um, um, you know, through um, the Commission for Revenue Allocation, yeah, the control of budget, and mm -hmm. other kind of stuff, mm -hmm. where certain uh, uh, allocations needs to be deliberately put in place, such as, for instance, these children to access mm -hmm. uh, playing, um, you know, playing utilities, recreation facilities. Yes, recreational facilities, because you know, um, the Children Act um, also yeah. obligates government to yeah. provide the same. Yes, and no parent can deny a child. Uh, the opportunity to play. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, uh, because that is part of their bringing. Yeah. Education, early childhood education is a devolved mm -hmm. function of government. And every county government mm -hmm. is obligated mm -hmm. to ensure that there are decent facilities, mm -hmm. human resource capacity, and having these parents uh, take their children to the nearest, you know, and, and education, the early childhood education needs to be accessible yeah. to the child in, yeah. a, in such a way that they don't strain. Yeah. But of course, um, we must appreciate the um, heterogeneity of our country where um, we are not equally developed. Yeah. When you look at the northern part of our country, Some people more travel uh, long distances to even access water, mm -hmm. education, food, and all these, um, you know, just because of the nature of the arid, uh, uh, aridity of that part of our, of our country. Yeah. In urban areas such as this city of Nairobi, mm -hmm. we still have challenges because we have informal settlements. Yeah. We have uh, f people who found themselves not within the family mm -hmm. setups. Mm -hmm. That's why you find them in the streets. And there are children there. Yeah. They, they, they're having their children. They are begging for food. They are begging for maybe a shelter. They are begging for, um, uh, you know, clothing. Mm -hmm. So you see, we have those challenges in society. And of course, I think this discussion is very useful mm -hmm. so that we see 
uh, what is the mandate of the parent? Mm -hmm. What is the mandate of the state? Mm -hmm. And what is the mandate of institutions of governance? So that we have a a full protection of this child that we are talking about today. Right, all right. Now you've mentioned the issue of um, obligation in terms of rights to education, and I'm sure our dear viewers are watching, um, I'll call it the suckers or sort of a ping pong that is ongoing concerning the competency-based curriculum, that is CBC. We have witnessed since last year and the transition of you know retired President Uru Kenyatta's regime and now President William Bruto's regime, there have been the fears that the curriculum might be abolished altogether. And um, we have had a task force report put in recommendation. But in between now and then, uh, we have seen parents raise details, which, again, they replicate to the children in terms of the status of that particular curriculum. Tell us how that affects the child in terms of the right to education, given that even in some schools, um, the transition to junior secondary school has not quite you know, um, get, uh, got the right kickstart. Yeah. Um let me begin by saying that uh, the law uh, or the legal regime that we have in our country gives uh, you know, the, the government mm. an authority to reform the education system that we have in our country. And we've seen even uh, through the history of our education system where there's been uh, changes. Yeah. But these changes must be made with a lot of care not to disrupt learning, the transitions, Mm -hmm. And even uh, the order that is in place, um, uh, that is put in place to, in the education sector and the related institutions, mm -hmm. right from the beginning to the higher levels of learning. But you ask a very important question that um, uh, parents now are in despair. Mm -hmm. They are looking at their children. Probably they are not allocated a teacher. Yeah. Probably the, 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 the money that the government uh, promised them uh, in terms of um, allocating 15000 Kenya shillings per child mm -hmm. has not yet been, uh, you trickled know, down uh, uh, trickled down to the to the, to the schools. Mm -hmm. But um, I think uh, um, um, uh, we've seen in the past, uh, you know, years. I mean, even when we were transitioning from um, the A level system of education to the eight four four, there were lessons to that effect, and there were commissions that were formed, and we are also seeing this. And it's very unfortunate that. Um, and the junior secondary school is happening uh, also with the, uh, coinciding with the transition of a government mm -hmm. where we are the initiator in terms of um, uh, implementing you know the pilot program mm -hmm. being the old regime the mm -hmm. former regime yeah. and now we have a new regime mm -hmm. but you see it's a very unfortunate that this situation was politicized okay. because during the campaigns that we saw last year yeah. uh, you saw some of our political leaders saying that we are going to abolish this yes. we are going to, you elect us we are going to do away with this yes. just whipping emotions of parents because this thing yes. was uh, very new yeah but um let me um uh, trying to expound mm. um, the CBC curriculum. Okay. It is a framework yeah. that experts uh, set, they were on, uh, being guided by the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development, uh, where uh, in its uh, reform mm -hmm. of the education uh, you know, uh, program, um, it established that uh, the aid for four system had put at the center uh, uh, the teacher. Yeah. So and the parent and the child had been left here, uh, you the know, children. aside. Yeah. So CBC is putting the learner, for this matter, the child, at the, the center. center. Mm. So that this child uh, fully innovates, yeah. uh, 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 experiences um, uh, his or her talent, and uh, brings out the best of what the child likes because... Um, you know, the 844 was, um, you know, uh, passing based, yeah. pa passing exams. Mm -hmm. I want to pass exams. I yeah. became number one. Yeah. I was on top of my class. Mm -hmm. So this CBC is trying to demystify the com the, co the competition mentality mm -hmm. of um, acquiring, um, you know, skills. But again, uh, it had also uh, uh, identified that um, we were losing values and ethos. Mm -hmm as um, you know, a generation that was being brought up uh, in our society mm -hmm. because uh, the parents had uh, abdicated their roles. Mm -hmm. They had left the burden of educating these children to the teacher. And the teachers were getting burdened. Mm -hmm. So you see, you put a child in a boarding school, 
you've paid school fees, it's like you've washed your hands. Yeah. So it's no responsibility. And you saw that evidence when uh, children were being given assignments or homework to go and do together with their parents. Mm -hmm. And the parents complain. Yeah, they say, just you know, a lot of work. The, the, well, I've paid their school fees and they have sent <laughs> to school. There's a teacher who's paid by government. Why are you bringing this to, to, to us? Mm -hmm. But look at uh, a child bringing. Mm -hmm. It's a whole round, um, uh, you know, approach mm -hmm. where there's the parent, uh, mm -hmm. where the child is learning by uh, how it is being done, mm -hmm. how the mother is doing uh, things, how the father is doing things, things how the others teacher. in the household are doing things. Mm -hmm. And also in school, mm -hmm. where now there's a curriculum, yeah. where the teacher is guiding yes. this learner mm -hmm. to say, um, you know, this is how well, these values mm -hmm. or these skills are inculcated in this uh, learner. And you can see it becomes a whole round uh, kind of teaching. But now, it is very unfortunate that when um, the president formed uh, what was called uh, the Presidential Working uh, Party on uh, Education, mm -hmm. um, it was established that um, um, the, 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 preparation, the preparations for the transitions well, was not um, you know, adequate. Mm -hmm. Um, it was not farmed up because um, before even this year, mm -hmm. uh, parents had been told that their children will be transitioning into the secondary schools. Right. We, um, I'm a parent actually of um, a grade seven, the, the junior secondary school. Right. So I'm actually talking from a practical experience. We were even uh, uh, invited to choose schools, secondary schools for these children. Hold on to that. But you, you see now. Uh -huh. Hold on to that. We'll have to take our first break. Uh, we'll be back with that particular discussion. My director tells me it is time for our first break, but we'll be back on this discussion on the issue of right to education and the CBC curriculum versus what the state has to do concerning that. Stay with us. Tough choices was what she was left with. The battle between the two puts the whole city in danger. Lulu Mawa. Nothing changed. I will do it myself. I've seen the injustices and the prejudices and the blind face in this world. I can't do it. Jimmy, Jimmy! Kafir! show that brings you the latest in the world of fashion, glamour, creativity, and style. Fashion Diaries got you sorted as we explore street fashion, modeling, runways, red carpet events, and so much more. Catch me, Ashley Asachi, as we unlock the greatest fashion event. Keep it locked. Kipindi hewani ni mitindo ya kipwani. Kama ilivo kipindi hiki, kina usu nyimbo. Nyimbo za tara, mchakacha, omidora, omidundiko, bila kusahau mapishi. <laughs> Mbao ndio uti wa mgongo wapani ya Afrika mashariki. Yamani swaibu zangu mliopo maskani. Hatuonani wenzangu, najua mwanitamani. Hapa KU TV, eh, nahoda muendesha chombo cha baharini. Yani. Uwa linalunukia na kuvutia waredi. Um. 
Thank you for staying with us. You're watching Law Matters tonight. We are looking into the issue of children and their rights. We are having the ED for Kreko Joshua Chongwon to interrogate this particular subject. Before we went on the break, we were talking about the CBC curriculum. What is happening, the drama and certainty, and what the government is doing concerning that. Uh, Joshua, you're talking about the responsibility of the government on it and where they're losing the point in terms of protecting the children's rights in terms of right to education. Yes. Um, so the government is obligated to provide all the means that enables uh, these children uh, to access education without interference. And um, when they gave a directive that all learners will remain in their primary schools, have um, you know a separate uh, board of management for the school. Um, uh, Thirty thousand teachers are being recruited, and um, uh, each public school to receive one teacher uh, to be in charge of the CBC. And at um, uh, the same time, uh, the government um, promised to allocate fifteen thousand shillings per child. Uh, um, uh, in the whole country, yeah, the but now we ask ourselves: mm -hmm. This has not really reached, uh, you know, down. Mm -hmm. Even these teachers who were recruited just in um, 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 in December and January, mm -hmm. as uh, uh, and, and as we speak now, most of them have not reported to these schools. Okay. The amount of that allocation has not even been, uh, you know, received in the schools. Mm -hmm. um, the change of the school uniforms for the junior secondary school is also a burden to parents. Mm -hmm. And you see, these uh, directives came um, at the tail end of uh, the plan. Yeah. So you see, uh, this creates confusion, especially mm. among parents that we are not prepared. Yeah. Uh, the cabinet secretary of education is on record mm -hmm. who uh, to have told the nation that 200,000 <laughs> children <laughs> haven't have a transition to the junior secondary uh, school. Mm -hmm. And you know, Irene, we are talking about children at the age of 12. Or even 11, 11 yeah. or even 10. Yeah. So where are these children? Mm -hmm. So it, it, it is an indicator that mm -hmm. there is a problem mm -hmm. in access to education, mm -hmm. especially at that lower level of age. Uh, uh, and I think these are the areas that um, we, we need to really interrogate and say, where are these children? So how, how do we arrest this particular situation? Because um, this is a, is a government in transition. It, has a, it is a government that has previously showed that they are not really into this um, part, uh, curriculum. It leaves parents um, unaware of the steps to take. So how do children protect the right of the children when they feel that, like the state is not taking a fast hand in what they are obligated to do? Yeah, you know, Irene, uh, the transition is just on the elective positions. But the government institutions are there. Okay. I'm quite sure there was no transition in the Teacher Service Commission. It's still the same. There was no transition in the Ministry of Education. It's mm -hmm. only just the Cabinet Secretary and probably uh, the, the, the Principal Secretary. The Secretariat is But the Directors and all those other people are, 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 the were same. there. Mm -hmm. So I think this is just a political excuse that is being used to say that mm -hmm. probably the government has not uh, settled. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, you cannot experiment on the children. Yes, you can. Because it's very important that mm -hmm. as you assume that responsibility through swearing in and even taking the oath mm -hmm. of public office, mm -hmm. uh, you take the initiative to ensure that that becomes the priority of the country mm -hmm. and the safeguard of all children of, um, you know, of our nation mm -hmm. so that we do not have to leave any child behind. Yeah. I know there are challenges in certain parts of this country, such as drought. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the kettle rustling in Kerio Valley, mm -hmm. where some schools have been closed. But I think those are areas where we can, uh, you know, flag out and say these are challenge, uh, ch challenges that are, are facing our people mm -hmm. just because of maybe calamities or violence and all these other things. Mm -hmm. But in the normal order where uh, there is uh, uh, peace and tranquility, mm -hmm. uh, normalcy in terms of um, uh, access to education by our children mm -hmm. needs to be, uh, you know, in full implementation. Right. And there should be, never be an excuse. All right. Now, moving away from the issues of right to education, looking into the issue of right to health, where does the obligation of the government start and where does it end? And why I'm raising this particular concern is that the previous administration had what we call the Beyond Zero campaign. And at the tail end of the administration, we had the Linda, Linda Mama program. But the moment the President William Ruto administration got into power, we had challenges with the issue of Linda Mama, 
which again, um, there was push and pull concerning uh, the issue of whether the program is still on or is not still on. NHIF mentioned that it is still on, but it is a program that largely uh, focuses on mothers, which uh, trickles down to the children. So where does this obligation start? And how far has it come to protect the children, uh, given that in some cases, some parents cannot afford to pay the NHIF? And even the Amendments Bill of 2022 has not quite addressed the issue of people who are left out in this particular um, sector, so to speak. Yeah, Irene, um, Schedule, f Schedule 4 of our Constitution uh, provides for healthy as a devolved function of government. So, uh, in other words, we have 47 departments mm -hmm. in charge of health in yeah. this country. Mm -hmm. And these are the 47 county governments. Devolved function. Yeah. It means they are allocated resources. Mm -hmm. and they are allocated personnel. Mm -hmm. And they are fully in charge of their affairs when it comes to public uh, health utilities. Eh? But now we have um, the national level ministry, which is in charge of policy. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you must have uh, seen, and uh, this is a very good example during COVID-19, mm -hmm. uh, the national government would give policy guidance. Uh, and the related uh, resources such as the drugs, um, um, uh, so, uh, through units such as the KEMSA, mm -hmm. the Kenya uh, Supplies Agency. Uh, but, you know, in terms of implementation, to ensure that every Kenyan accesses uh, health care, mm -hmm is the, uh, you know, the county government. Yeah, okay. Because yeah, that is the obligation. In fact, the, even uh, the Beyond Zero is mm -hmm. just a complementary initiative. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just just like the way a foundation can also, run, let's say, non-governmental can come the and equity, probably... Equity yes, is sponsoring uh, education. Yes, education, education and whatever, something like that. Yeah. But you know, uh, as Kenyans, we must be categorically aware that there are resources that are located near you. Okay. And when they are being allocated near you, you have also been given power through public participation. Because um, public participation is also in law. Yeah. Where you have the responsibility to allocate resources as, the, as per the priority needs of your locality. And that is why the county governments are obligated to invite citizens to convene in terms of looking at the priorities for the five year, hence the, the county integrated development plans mm -hmm. and the annual development plans, uh, which is the um, annual uh, you know, plans where annual budgets in terms of resources are mm -hmm. allocated. Mm -hmm. So Kenyans needs uh, to know this mm -hmm. so that they participate. Their, 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 their first point of participation is through elections. Mm -hmm. But when you've cast the vote and you've gotten your leaders, mm -hmm. that does not mean that is the end. Yeah. And you know, we need to connect the vote, the decision that we make on the ballot, mm -hmm. and livelihood. And livelihood here mm -hmm. simply means the basic needs. It could be health care, it could be food, it could be shelter, it could be education, uh, it could be water, and any other thing that, you know, decent, uh, 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 you know, living uh, can be enabled if it is accessible mm -hmm. and availed at probably even no cost. Mm -hmm just such as the healthcare, but you're asking me a question, mm -hmm. that where does it start? Uh, and now here we are connecting to a child. Yeah. You know, um, the, the healthcare that is accessible and provided to a mother is equivalent to also an healthcare that is availed and access, uh, uh, made accessible to a child. Because you know, this child um, 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 you know, um, 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 discussion begins at inception. Yes. <laughs> Because this is where the, the, the mother needs now to access um, uh, antenatal uh, yeah, the care. The acids and all. Yes, yes, yes. You know, all those things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, this entails uh, issues around sexual reproductive uh, health. Because mm -hmm. it needs to be accessible. It needs to be friendly. Yeah. It needs to be well-resourced. It needs also to be, uh, there must be available knowledge also mm -hmm. on the part of the, of the mothers mm -hmm. that are supposed to be beneficiaries of these services. Mm -hmm. And you know, once they access this, you will see healthy babies being born. And I think um, I was reading it, I was reading today's uh, newspaper, I think mm -hmm. that was the star, mm -hmm. that uh, 21 uh, mothers die every day while giving birth. It is today actually in the yeah. cover page, yeah, yeah, right. the, I mean the front page. Mm -hmm. And I was asking myself, then are, are we serious in terms of uh, uh, the management of our healthy public affairs in this country? Mm -hmm. 
if we are losing those lives yeah, and they are, they are quoting the world health organization that is a research that is being done by it's by, by, by them yeah it's too many so if you have these mothers being vulnerable at that stage what about, about when they give birth yeah because you know it involves now uh, the responsibility now even expands mm -hmm. there's the postnatal care yeah. there is the uh, element of um, you know safeguarding this this mother uh, to be in an environment where she is able to show love to this child, love and care yeah. to this child, yeah. and the environment is also assured of, um, you know, decency and peace. But imagine a mother that is now in the Korea Valley, where they are bandits, yeah, it's, 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 or where there is drought, there is mm -hmm. no food, mm -hmm. or uh, uh, probably um, where they are, you know, they, 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 they um, uh, terrorists. So you see, those are environments of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. But now it is the, the, the obligation of the state to provide order okay. in terms of implementing necessary um, legislation that is being put in place to ensure that children mm -hmm. have an environment that they can grow, uh, access to different needs such as education, mm -hmm. health care, drinking water, mm -hmm. and uh, any other learning material. It could mm -hmm. be at the household level, mm -hmm. um, or um, uh, and here when I talk about the household level, somebody will ask himself or herself that, how can a government be in a house, somebody's house? Yeah. But you know, enabling that family to live in um, an environment that they enjoy uh, the peace and the access, mm -hmm. or let's say for instance, uh, income mm -hmm. at, the, at the household, they are able to buy food, they are able to buy Medicare, they are able um, to even plan for this child. Yeah. So that is an environment that we are talking about that can enable our children to grow. Right. But now look at situations where there are drugs. Uh, or rather they are drug abuses, yeah, where the parents probably have been uh, you know, exposed to this. They, they, they will forget about their children. All right, and talking about the issue of environment um, and looking into the basis of street children, who now has the obligation of protecting this particular group? Because you've seen the situation uh, in Western Kishu, I think it was um, three years ago during the, the tenure of um, the senator now, uh, Jackson Mandago, the former governor, they had to take the street children out of Eldoret town because they're having a national celebration. They sort of had to hide them because they felt ashamed of, of the children, which begs the question, who now takes responsibility of street children? Because we've seen them in the street in major cities and towns, but now it seems like they're on their own. The government does not create safeguards uh, for this particular group. Yeah, it's a responsibility of the state. We have the children's department, and they have children officers in every county um, uh, across this country. Mm -hmm. So um, um, where there is a vulner vulnerability of our children in terms of, uh, uh, you know, access to protection or uh, food or any other basics that they need, the state has that mandate. And um, even it is provided in the UN Convention for um, you know the rights of the child, where Kenyan government, the Kenyan government is a signatory to it, mm -hmm. and it's even there in the Children Act, yeah, where it it's the obligation of the state to, to ensure that children who have been left, either because of one reason or the other, uh, it could even be let's say by death for, of uh, both parents, and there's no other person to safeguard this. Mm -hmm. Then the state comes in. But why then are we seeing children in the streets? Because it begs the question on who are we supposed to say so in this particular situation? Because mostly we have seen the non-governmental organization and well-wishers take up these children, but the numbers are still um, huge numbers, which has caused to the criminal activities that we have seen, especially in Nairobi City. Who should we uh, put to account, given that the numbers are growing in terms of street children who are lacking in education, in the right to education and health care, food, and, and safe water? You know, Irene, uh, it's unfortunate that um, even these children, you know, they live under, um, you know, our own uh, watch. Because when we pass the streets, we see them. And it's none of our business. Yeah, uh, we see, um, you know, the, the, the government officials, you know, they are also there. Mm -hmm. the police officers and whatever. But, you know, there's a responsible department yeah. for the safeguard of these children, mm -hmm. the children's department. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, you know, this country mm -hmm. suffers a lot from um, deficit, from, um, you know, pro-people governance. Uh, pro-people governance here, I mean, mm -hmm. it is governance that um, gives utu or dignity to the people where the priority in terms of uh, safeguard 
is the is, is the people the is the people you know that kind of and of course the people again have also been uh, exposed where they do not know that it is their right to demand their right to participate mm -hmm. they have a democratic value to call government to order okay. and say yeah. uh, these uh, street um, you know families uh, uh, you know must stop mm -hmm. but again Irene mm -hmm. street families uh, is not only a phenomenon that is unique to Kenya. Yeah, it's it's all over. Yeah. Even the U.S. has street families. Yeah, it's true. But people would think that probably there are no street families there. Mm -hmm. But you see there, yeah. there is a government program mm -hmm. where even porridge and food is brought to the street, uh, you know, uh, uh, families. families. And there are tents yeah. that they, they are being given mm -hmm. and even uh, occasionally refurbished uh, uh, to have them live, uh, you know, a decent, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, shelter mm -hmm. in a way that they are not very exposed. Mm -hmm. and, and we saw that. I saw that in yeah, Washington. Yeah. Why not here in Nairobi? Why not in Nairobi? Why not in Mombasa? Or why not in Nakuru and in, uh, you know, let's say in Kitale? Mm -hmm. But um, it's very unfortunate that now, um, like that example you gave from Wasinishu where mm -hmm. they were hiding from the shame. Yeah. But you know, that was just a temporary measure. Yeah. Um, um, uh, but it was not really sustainable mm -hmm. in itself. But I think as we do advocacy, uh, uh, most organizations that are dealing with children mm. are on the record even to have demanded from government mm. that all children deserve a decent uh, living and they are bringing, mm -hmm. whether they are in the streets or whether they are in refugee camps or whether they are in uh, those Kiriwale places where they are kettle grass playing or where even they are landslides okay. or even during COVID-19. I mean, when uh, we had schools getting closed for a long period of time and these children were at home and they were getting exposed. So it was still the obligation of the state to ensure that children are safeguarded. Right. And that is why about the 200,000 that I mentioned who have not uh, transitioned to uh, junior secondary school, I am also asking the government, where are these children? All right, it is a sad situation, sad state of situations there. And we quite hope that maybe something will be done about that. But it is about time for our second break. But once we return, we'll be having more discussion on this as well as our question and answer session from our audience. Don't touch that dial. So the government stakeholders can uptake these solutions. Those small acts multiplied by, by millions of us will help make a difference in the world at the end of the day. It's just a slight behavior change that we need and you'll find that it serves us a bit, a bit uh, more than you put in. And, and that's the goal. We want to live a better world than we found. Because at the rate we are going, it's, it's, it's dire. We will secure the planet for future generations. Welcome to Children's Corner. I am... Welcome to... Children's Corner. Children's Corner. Lula ni programu inayokupa fursa ya kutizama video zozote pindi tu unapokuwa na nafasi. Hiti za kukupa motisha, drama, maisha ya vio viku, teknolojia, masuala ya jamii, kuzuru maeneo tofauti, spoti, burudani na zaidi. Pata programu ya Lola sasa kwenye rununu yako kwa yote unayohitaji.
Welcome back. You're watching Law Matters. We're discussing the issue of children rights. We are on the tail end of this particular segment on this particular discussion. We are having the executive director for Krako, Julius Chiangwon, to debunk this particular discussion. Now, when, before we left for the break, we are talking about the issue of uh, street children. And there was a time in this country where we had cases of extrajudicial killings in, in terms of um, children, uh, street children now, children in the streets, how, how you may call it. But over time, the incidents have reduced. But be that as it may, um, we have had situations of you know, street children losing their lives and they there's no mechanisms for either their friends or their guardians to um, obtain justice in, in that particular situation. Um, in the progress that we have done so far and in the law mechanisms that we have, um, do you think much has been done to cushion and reduce um, these particular uh, cases? Uh, just the way the government, um, through the Civil Registration Bureau of Persons, have details or have a database of all um, you know Kenyans and as well as also children, mm. those ones who have not become adults. It should also be the same way that they have also a database of all the street families, and uh, um, uh, and that can also inform their planning. Because I'm quite sure that also the national census of 2019 mm. attempted to capture the population of um, you know the, the I mean the the, the street households mm -hmm. and uh, I think that can be a good vehicle uh, for the government uh, to even um, try also to rehabilitate these people mm -hmm. to engage into meaningful uh, activities that can also uh, restore their you know their humanity okay. because again um, 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 these families are not family, uh, permanently street uh, families because they are those ones who get well wishers, who can also, you know, uh, safeguard them or even take them to school. Um, uh, and we have so quite a number of initiatives. But I think um, the government mm -hmm. needs also to have, um, um, you know, a full obligation mm -hmm. of ensuring that um, these families, in as much as probably they may not have the necessary skills, but again, uh, they would also be in uh, rehabilitation centers uh, in such a way that um, they are able also to engage in uh, building the nation. Yeah. But because again, um, these are families, um, and and and, and their, their, their 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 categorization is multiple. Yeah. There are those ones who are even known where yeah. their people are, but just because of one reason or another, or despair, mm -hmm. or even mental health issues. Mm -hmm. Uh, they just went to the streets. Right. And you will find those ones who are really very, very, um, you know, uh, forthright in terms of even communication, in terms of even language. Even their begging uh, language is very convincing. I mean, they have very good communication skills. Yeah. So we ask ourselves, why do we leave these people just to be in that, um, you know, abject uh, poverty mm -hmm. and just depend on handouts from mm -hmm. well-wishers, whereas we have a government That's that great. can allocate resources uh, to the rehabilitation of these, um, you know, uh, street, um, you know, households, mm -hmm. uh, in such a way that uh, we can also have humanity uh, being, um, you know, um, dignified mm -hmm. um, uh, as we uh, live in this uh, country called Kenya. All right, let's shift focus to um, um, the children who are affected by the issue of um, FGM um, in the northern part of this country. Um, because the culture is, is, is entrenched in that particular community, when the child gets into that particular environment, most of the time they do not know the recourse mechanism of fighting back this particular vice. Billions of shillings have been in injected by non-governmental organizations and even the government in terms of eradicating this vice. But still, the children are endangered in those um, uh, communities. What is the recourse for children in those particular setup if the persons with the primary responsibility are not taking action to mm. solve um, those issues. Yeah, Irene, it's very unfortunate that we still have harmful cultural practices in our country, and not only just the female genital mutilation. Uh, the example that you've given in the North uh, is just because of its magnitude of um, practice, yeah. but we have also in different other parts mm. of this country, we have in Korea, yeah. um, that is in Migori, mm. we have um, in Narok, in Kajiado, we have 
in Samburu and you know all these other Amazing. places. Yeah. Uh, but um, the female genital mutilation is not the only harmful yes. practice that we can point out here. Yeah. We have also early marriages. Yes. Um, we have uh, child labor. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, you know ch uh, child neglect, where the parents are there and they but don't they care. Much. You know yeah, and all that. Whereas um, uh, early childhood education is compulsory. Mm -hmm. Uh, where um, um, uh, parents who do not take their children to school would also be would be arrested and prosecuted by you know mm -hmm. by, by, by the state, mm -hmm. and uh, all these um, as we speak, uh, uh, Irene, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think different efforts have been put in place by different actors mm -hmm. to combat these um, you know harmful uh, practices. But again, as they say. That it takes generations for some of these practices to, to be, be totally to, uh, it will be totally arrogated. But again, mm -hmm. I think there are structural problems yeah. that probably if the government could intervene, because sometimes also um, 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 when we were uh, trying to advocate for uh, the eradication of FGM, we also found out that the practice is also a source of livelihood of certain individuals, especially more the 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 the, 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 the circumcisers. Okay. I mean the people who are being paid when they conducted their practice. Okay. So those people would not want to let it go. Yeah, because they and lose their livelihood. Yes, baby. because they lose their livelihood. Mm. Because once they circumcise a girl, uh, they, 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 they are paid. And, and there's a way or now even they are being honored in mm. society. Mm. But if you get an alternative source of livelihood mm. uh, for these people, you see, you cut the cycle of the practice. Just, yeah. Then the other thing is the bit, the firm belief that uh, probably this thing has been in so many years and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I think also schooling, access to education is also a vehicle that can uh, minimize this mm -hmm. and ensure that we have generations that um, are more in or rather in majority numbers uh, who um, feel or rather who believe that mm -hmm. um, I'm, uh, uh, and we who strongly uh, affirm that that practice is not very good, uh, is not even good at all, and should never be practiced, and they become also champions for the end of such kind of practice. Or let's say, for instance, uh, the belief that um, you must marry a, 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 you know, a, a 15 year old girl, and you are 50 years or you are 60 years, and probably that is your last wife, or you say, you know, that's the person who's going to take it. You know, there are communities who still believe yeah, that. So if we have such kind of conversation in this uh, uh, century, mm. So it means uh, we are getting uh, um, um, lost mm. in terms of the direction of our development. Uh, and, and, and why do I say that? I say that because the government needs to be deliberate, because it's the custodian of power. Yes. And power here, I simply mean uh, security and the resources. All right. You know, the resources through the taxes that we pay. Okay. Because they pull it. Because it's just a matter of them making that decision through various arms and more specifically the legislature to say we are dedicating this amount of money to combat this harmful practice once and for all. All right. Thank you, Julius. I'll cut you short on that particular question because I want to allow our audience to be part of this particular discussion by asking questions. Um, kindly um, ask, shoot your question, introduce yourself, and then we move. Switch on your mic. Uh, we can't hear you. Sorry. <laughs> yes, that's fine. Stella. Uh, on the issue of parental responsibility, mm. how will you ensure that the 50-50 parental responsibility rule is, mm. a, is um, entrenched? Yeah, because you know, um, most of the time, the man is always the giver, mm. and in most lawsuits, we find that the woman sues the man for child support. However, the law says parental responsibility should be 50-50. Okay. Then what happens in the event the man can't provide, but the woman can provide or both cannot provide? Who All should right. provide? Uh, Julius, answer that particular question in one minute because of time, because we have uh, another round of questions. Okay, thank you very much, Stella. That's a very good uh, question, and uh, that is a mirror of actually what is happening in our society. Um, parental responsibility is 50-50. 50 50, and uh, you cannot also substitute these uh, responsibilities eh? mm -hmm. because whatever a mother offers a child, mm -hmm. like for instance, a man, the father cannot breastfeed. Yeah. I mean, uh, um, and uh, um, 
So, so when uh, when you say um, one abdicates the responsibility, um, and and they, you know they seek justice in terms of uh, being uh, you know uh, supported on the other side, uh, I think this is a, a disorder in our society because these people when they were getting this child, they were together. They were together. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Irene, they were together, and they were very happy, mm -hmm. you know, in the making of this child. Okay. Circumstances only just prevailed upon, probably it could be poverty, it could be whatever, and all that kind of stuff. But again, I think also, um, Stella, we need to create awareness for persons to know that they are obligated to take care and love children. Right. And uh, the consequences that uh, uh, arises if they, um, you know, abscond that uh, particular, because most people do not know that. Yeah. So awareness can be one of the ways to combat yeah, and even... Um, 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 uh, simplification of the laws that are in place so that Kenyans uh, can also be able to be uh, uh, able to understand that this is the provision of the law. All right. Thank you, Stella. The second question, Kenya. Uh, okay. My name is uh, Alex Kipchumba. Uh, my question is a uh, follow-up on the same. Uh, it's, a, it's a question on the how we can enforce the 50-50 the uh, parental responsibility because uh, as you have said that it should be something we work towards but how does the government will the government uh, enforce this in our in our society uh, as, as the moment at the moment thank you Alex uh, many other questions before we close the question and answer session my name is Toyota Owen a student at uh, Kenyatta University School of Law first year I have a question on, uh, I think you say that uh, uh, these chil children who are on the streets are the responsibility of government, and government should fund uh, their existence, like they should find their livelihood. Now, how does we see this happen when all the time we see these kids in the streets of Nairobi and all other major towns in Kenya, and still you talked about the U.S. a bit why you can't even realize that there are street children in that country when we have them, uh, the fact that, the fact is that we have them. All right, thank you so much, Owen. Julius, can you answer those two questions uh, within a minute or two because of time? Alex, thanks so much for the follow-up question that Stella had asked, and this is about the enforcement. You know, enforcement is not necessarily through a court of law. Uh, it's just a means that uh, probably people can resort to enforce, uh, uh, to enforce that. But um, I think um, uh, uh, the, the, the best way to go about this is um, 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 to just understand backgrounds of people. Because again, uh, they are, they, they, now we have a situation in our country where uh, some mothers choose to be single just to get a baby and they don't want anything to do with the man. Uh, you know, all those, and, and we have people who are like that. We have a constituents who are like that. Mm. Um, um, and, and, and I think um, it should be in the best interest of um, those ones who are advocating for the children's rights to have everyone to be obligated to ensure that the interest of the child comes first. Mm. And um, the state cannot only just be the vehicle that can enforce this, but again, there's also what is called personal responsibility. And uh, uh, personal responsibility starts uh, from um, you know the values and ethos mm. that we have in our society. Then the last bit is uh, these street children. You know, a responsible government that um, has been given by the, uh, the mandate by the voters will uh, reason in terms of planning and ensure that we have um, you know uh, decency in terms of handling this disadvantage because we call them the, the, the vulnerable. In fact, they fall under Article 100 of the Constitution, which is the marginalized and the minority. They, they fall within that. And there is specific allocation through affirmative action uh, where these categories of citizens are taken care by the government. Okay. Thank you so much, Julius, for the perspective on those particular questions. Quite interesting from our audience because of time, we'll have to leave it at that. My director tells me that we are pressed on time, but we hope that you have grabbed a thing, or two, a thing or two concerning the issue of children's rights, whether you're a mother, a guardian, a single damsel, a student, you have got to understand what the law says and what can be done uh, 
one way or another. Be sure to join us next week on Tuesday, same time, same place, as we give you insights concerning what is happening on the issue of law. My name is Irene Mwange. We are glad that you stayed tuned. Have a good night. sisi wenyewe tutajiamini tunaweza kujiajiri wenyewe Afrika kwa kweli tuna mahitaji ambayo kiasuluhisha unaweza kuathiri watu kwenye bara hili bila uoga watu huwa na uzalishaji zaidi wanajawa na ujasiri wanakuwa wabunifu na wanakuwa wenye maarifa Niliamua kuacha kazi hata kama sitafanikiwa nitakuwa nimejaribu nitakuwa najua haiwezekani Hakuna kitu cha ajabu hapa. Kila anayepata ufanisi ufanya kazi usiku na mchana. Kitu kitakusukuma na kuwezesha kupata maarifa ambayo huko na Tunajaribu kutengeneza kitu kitakachopita mipaka nchi hii. Ikiwa unataka kubadilisha ulimwengu, anza na nyumbani. program is rated GE. Content carried in here is suitable for general family viewing. Ni furaha, ni furaha ambayo huwezi kuelezea. Lakini kujenga hili kwa miaka miwili na nusu iliyopita imekuwa safari yenye yenye changamoto. Nilijitosa nikiwa na hamu kuhusu tatizo. Sasa naelekea kuchuma mapato ya suluhisho nililolipata tunataka harakati hii ilete maarifa zaidi ambayo yataathiri huduma ya afya haijalishi kama kampuni uh, ikianza tunafikia malengo fulani kila mmoja anaongea kuhusu kuanza kampuni kupata pesa fulani na mengineo hiyo sio sababu haswa tuko hapa ni ukweli wa uwezo wa kuwapa watu kitu ambacho watakienzi na kusamini mafanikio kwangu Nadhani nimeshayafikia tayari. Kwa kile tunachokifanya kwa kweli tuna jaribu kufanya kitu sio kutengeneza pesa tu. Tunajaribu kutengeneza kitu kitakachopita mipaka nchi hii. Uzuri wa kuweka madawa kwa mfumo wa kidijitali iwe pochi la madaktari ama utambuzi wa ugonjwa ni kuwa utadumu kwa hakika zitadumu na nadhani teknolojia italeta mapinduzi kwa kitengo cha afya kwa njia ambazo hatukutarajia katika mwaka mmoja natarajia kuona ndege zisizo kuwa na rubani ah zikipeleka madawa kamera ziko tayari na action tunaidi programu wa mashini za bei ya chini za ultrason kwanza kabisa huku Uganda Uh, daktari mmoja anawahudumia karibu wagonjwa elfu saba kwa sasa na kulingana na wizara ya afya dakika tisini hadi masaa matano hutumika hospitalini kila siku hata ukiangalia ili kupata huduma ya afya lazima uende hospitalini kwenye taasisi kama wewe ni mgana kuna uwezekano umeelelewa kwa familia ambayo labda baba yako mjomba au jamaa wako anaugua ugonjwa sugu na imekubidi kwenda hospitalini na kwa magonjwa sugu kinachofanyika ni kuwa tofauti na 
nina uhakika tumeugua malaria tofauti na malaria ninapoenda hospitalini ninatibiwa kisha naenda zangu na naiwacha nafasi hiyo kwa mtu mwingine mtu anapotambuliwa kuwa na ugonjwa sugu inamaanisha kuwa maisha yako yote utaishi kurudi hospitalini ili kukidhi afya yako kwa hiyo jinsi watu wanavyozidi kutambulika na magonjwa sugu ndivyo mfumo wa huduma ya afya unazidi kusumbuka. Baadhi ya vitu unavyohitaji kama mgonjwa ugonjwa sugu ni vitu vya kimsingi kwa mfano mgonjwa wa kisukari kwa mfano kwame anaugua kisukari. Ah kwame atahitaji kumtembelea daktari mara moja kila miezi mitatu na kwa muda huu itabidi kwame azingatie sana afya yake kwa sababu tofauti na malaria ambapo unajihisi mgonjwa unaweza kuwa na shinikizo la damu ah, bila kujua. Hivyo ukweli wa kuwa itanchukua nusu siku kwenda hospitalini ili kwenda kuangaliwa inafanya watu wengi kutoenda kuangaliwa hivyo inaishia kwa labda utakufa kiajali ama tunasubiri wakati wa dharura kukimbiza hospitalini na uwezekano wako kunusurika ni mdogo hivyo tukatambua kwa kutoa huduma hii ambapo watu wana uraisi wa kuweza kukidhi magonjwa sugu kwa a, kwa kutembea kwa muda wa dakika tano kuangalia afya yao na kuendelea na maisha yao ni jambo linalostahiki um, kufuatiliwa. Nafikiri suluhisho zinazopaswa kutolewa Afrika zitatengenezwa na Afrika yenyewe, sawa? Na hizi ni suluhisho ambazo zimetengenezwa kwa ajili ya Afrika. Na lazima ziendelee kuandamana na Afrika sako kwa bako. Tulifanya utafiti na tukagundua kwamba kiasi cha pesa ambacho wamama wanaweza kumudu cha ultrasound ni shilingi 1500. Uh, ikilinganishwa na kutembelea kituo cha afya jijini na naudi ni shilingi 1000 za Uganda na kisha Wafanyiwe ultrasound ambayo ni shilingi 2020 na lazima urudi manyumbani mwao huko vijijini. Na si karibu. Hivyo wanaishia kutumia shilingi 1030 ila hizo ni pesa ambazo zingetumika kwa matumizi mengine. Hivyo tumeshirikiana na akina mama. Uh, tumekuwa safarini pamoja nao na tunajua kwamba wanahitaji suluhisho hizi pale walipo. Na hapa Mscan tuna mfumo wa ushirikiano ambao tunatumaia kwamba utaweza kubadilisha uh, utoaji wa huduma za afya huku Afrika ambapo unashirikiana na jamii na kuwapa suluhisho. Kwa mfano sisi tunalipisha uh, dola pili kwa picha ambapo dola moja na kuja kwetu na nyingine na muendea mama. Na baada ya mwaka mmoja dola hii inatuwezesha kupata pesa tulizotumia uh, kutengeneza bidhaa hii na hii bado itamilikiwa na kituo palipo na mashine hii. Hivyo unavyoona mfumo huu tunaotumia ni wa Kiafrika, ni mfumo endelevu na tunatumai kwamba tutachochea ukuaji wa jasiria ya mali wa kiafya na wa kijamii kote barani Afrika. Scan inamaanisha Mobile Scan Solution Uganda Limited. Huwa tunatengeneza mashini za ultrasound za B 